Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Uh, I am going to probably update this during the day on, uh, on Tuesday uh, once I see the overnight European model because this is a really fascinating uh, GFS model run that we've had have tonight. Um, we've been talking about this whole concept of this grueling process of pattern change that is happening and I, I or pattern shifting or however you want to call it things are definitely changing and we are going to a uh, blocking pattern that we have not seen here in quite a long time now i want to set it up first off with what's going on along the east coast uh today with this trough and, and a little shot of rain that's moving up the coast it's really not a big deal here that upper that system winds up cutting off and you can see it right here on the um uh forecast this is for already we're into friday morning so i want to just kind of highlight this for one second to show you just what's going on we have systems that are coming in uh, from the pacific one after another and and this is a, a marked change in the pattern uh, that we've had because we're, now we're starting to see weather systems marching across now there is a ridge that builds here in the eastern states much as the kind of ridge that we've seen uh, for much of the last couple of months, except that the difference is that we now have this active southern stream going on. At the same time, we have an upper ridge that's beginning to build up across the Atlantic uh, toward Greenland. And what this is causing is warming that's going on uh, in the poles. It's actually coming from both the Arctic, the uh, Alaska side and on the uh, um, the Atlantic side. So it's coming in here uh, in, from both ways. And what that does is that eventually that displaces cold air southward into the east. At least that's what the model is suggesting. The, uh, the day run models on Monday and the run uh, models from 24 hours ago all pretty much moved in this particular direction. Now, what happens is you have this next weather system and you can see it here on the um, uh, model for Saturday morning, the one that moves from the plains up into the Great Lakes. So we've got system one in the Atlantic. Let me just change these colors because I like to use red for troughs. Um, the system one is in the Atlantic, still sitting here. You have this system here and this system coming in from off the Pacific. Now, if this system out in the Atlantic were not here, this would be a no-brainer. Uh, this this one would wind up going to the northeast like this, and we'd get a cold front coming to the east coast, and that would be that. But the problem is that you've got a ridge, a brick wall ridge building here. You've got this upper low bl essentially blocking this from doing what it would normally like to do. So the result is that we're going to wind up with the energy being shifted down to the coastline for. Um, the weekend so let's move this along even further now and you can see what happens that trough begins to stretch and moves up into new england and this is cold air that's being created by this upper air cyclone that's developing so one of the questions is in my mind and we're going to have to wait to see what the european does because the european was actually much further south with this but You've got this blocking, this ridge here up to the north into Greenland. The GFS makes this cyclone here uh, in New England, this upper air cyclone. So it creates a lot of cold air basically from the top down. So I think you're going to see uh, some uh, snows across uh, much of the, the interior northeast over the weekend as cold air begins to kind of take over. Now, we're not talking about super cold air here because the Arctic is cut off. So it's... It's basically manufactured cold air. That's why I call it do-it-yourself cold air. You also have now the next systems getting ready to move in uh, from the Pacific. So we're going to move this along and take a look at what goes on up in this region because this is where it's very important. Uh, you're going to have um, building, basically a building high across the top and all the low pressure to the south. So cold air winds up getting displaced southward over time. So as we move now through Thanksgiving week, you can see that blocking high that's developing here to the north over Greenland. This is so important to the overall pattern because now, instead of the jet stream kind of confining itself to Canada, you can see how far south everything is. 
You've got weather systems coming in from the Pacific one after another, and there is a flow of cold air that's feeding down out of Canada. So now we're going through Thanksgiving week, and there you can see it. Uh, we're now into Thanksgiving Day. We've got a system here, uh, another system coming in. You've got this big blocking high um, that's that's up uh, uh, up up to the right there. So you can see that big blocking high is just sitting there. Uh, all the cold air getting displaced further south. So this is going to open up opportunities for rain and snow um, in uh, areas further south than they normally would be. And as we carry it through the period, it, the blocking just gets even more intense over time. This is incredible blocking that's being indicated by the GFS model. And you can see how unusual it is. Look how far south these upper vortexes now are, are down uh, almost along 40 degrees north. So now we're looking at a rather um, a, 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 an active pattern and a cold pattern going forward. Let me uh, show you how this translates at the surface so it makes a little bit more sense. I know I'm throwing a lot at you here, but um, you know I think over time, as you start to see this sort of stuff more and more on my videos, you'll you'll get you'll gain a better understanding of, of, of this. The atmosphere is a very it's a fascinating place how it works sometimes, but I'll just back it up. So here's the system for today. And by the way, also notice that now in the plains uh, and in the plain states, you're getting your first snows out of this. And even back into northern Colorado and into Wyoming, uh, you're seeing some snows out of this first low. And you notice how that low just kind of goes straight north and then begins to redevelop right here in the east. Now, this was that first system for this weekend. Cold air is coming in. You're seeing some snows develop, some lake effect snows developing uh, to the west. Now, uh, now, the upper air system is a little further south. You're going to probably generate more precip. This is what the European was showing um, earlier today. Starting to get some action coming into the Pacific Northwest and also even into the southwest. We have a low that comes in into Southern California and brings rain into Arizona and New Mexico. And you can see it here. Uh, now we're into Thanksgiving week. And it actually wants to bring low pressure uh, across West Virginia and off the Mid-Atlantic coast uh, for Thanksgiving Day. So that would be interesting if that were right. And I have to tell you, the model's actually been showing this now, this this particular system like this for the last three or four days. It kind of disappeared overnight, but now it's reappeared. And you can see another one that the model has going into the weekend after Thanksgiving. Now, I want to caution, you know, and also, by the way, you can see the longer rangers action in the West. Let me just caution you right off the bat. We know that after about the sixth or seventh day, and even before the sixth or seventh day, a lot of this is going to be very. It's going to be very different when we get um, closer to the time frame. But the bottom line is that we have blocking and we have cold air that's going to be uh, changing the flavor of weather in the east and. To, to a large degree also with the blocking and systems coming in from the Pacific, uh, we're getting changes in the weather that's going on in the West. So there, there's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun and exciting, I think, over the next uh, couple of weeks as we watch this all uh, transpire and evolve. So um, I'll put up another video uh, tomorrow during the morning on Tuesday when I see what the European does and the mid-cycle run so we can get a, a, a good idea of where we're going with respect to this weekend. So have a great uh, day. And don't forget, uh, meteorologist JoeChaffee.com, WeatherLongIsland.com, NYCWeatherNow.com, um, which is going to be posting on a regular basis, and SSStormChasers.com, because if any of these become, you know, snowstorms in one way or form or another for somebody, SSStormChasers uh, will be out there chasing them. I should say SSStormChasing.com for the website.